Last topic that we're going to talk about is isomers of complex ions and isomers in general. There are many kinds. Isomers is a topic that, uh, at least if you had me, we touched on in Gen Chem 1, but you can see that we only touched on it. And uh, there are many kinds, two that you have to know for this course. And those are going to be cis-trans and optical isomers. Cis trans are matching ligands are next to cis or across from trans from each other. That's the cis trans at the bottom. And optical isomers, also called enantiomers, are non superimposable mirror images. And the word that you'll hear a lot for optical isomers is that the molecules are chiral. And chiral is the Greek word for hand. The Greek word for hand, and what you can do is you can show that your two hands are non-superimposable mirror images. So you can see that they appear to, um, they are definitely mirror images of each other. And yet, you cannot turn one hand into the other, even though they're made out of all of the same stuff. Chiral molecules are going to be just like this. They're made out of the same stuff, um, but you cannot turn one into another no matter how much it looks like you can, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see. And uh, how do I make this? You. There we go. I think we're back. Let's hope we're back. Otherwise, we'll be making this again. All right. So cis and trans. Uh, there are two optical isomers, or sorry, two um, uh, cis and trans isomers of uh, platen, and those go like this. Remember, uh, the, well, it's called cis platen, but the formula is going to be Pt and H3 2 Cl2. That is our complex ion, our transition metal complex ion. And there's going to be two ways in which you can do that. There's going to be cis platen. That's going to have PT in the middle. And cis means, uh, well, depending upon who you talk to, uh, it means cup, or it can sort of mnemonically, uh, as a way of remembering it, mean cup. And, uh, or cis means close to, I think. I'll have to look that up. But that's how I remember it anyway. And when you put the four, okay, this is square planar, which means there's going to be four positions, uh, all at 90 degrees to each other. And we're going to have two of the chlorines next to each other and two of the ammonias next to each other. This is this. And uh, then there's also transplatin. And transplatin, again, made out of the same stuff. That is what isomers mean. You're going to have NH3, NH3, Cl, and Cl. So they're trans or they're opposite uh, each other. So that's the difference between cis and trans. We can also have cis and trans uh, for this molecule, this transition metal complex down here, where we have two different water uh, ligands and four ammonia ligands. Uh, so if we were to do that, we're going to have cis and trans. Let's do uh, cis again here. We'll put our copper in the middle. This is octahedral, so there are six positions. Uh, and these, again, are out wedges. Out wedges come out of the uh, plane of the page at you, and uh, the back wedges are sort of dashed lines. Those are behind the page. And if we want to make cis, we're going to put the H2O molecules at any two positions that are next to each other. Uh, and let's put, it doesn't matter, but let's do OH2 and OH2. NH3, 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 
So that's going to be cis, trans, we'll do in green over here. So that's going to be right, same positions. Uh, except that now the H2Os are going to be across from each other. So we've got H2O, H2O. They could be there. Ooh. Where do we go? There we go. Uh, there we go. Or it could be there because all six of these positions are equivalent. So just two of them, any two of them that are next to each other and not across. Oh, that's cis. What am I doing? It can be any two positions that are across from each other. Those two are across from each other in the exact same way as the two up and below are across from each other. So there are lots of ways to do this. And it turns out that those are all equivalent and they're all the same trans thing. So this is trans. And those are cis trans isomers for um, transition metal complexes. Let me squeak in one more thing here. I know the page is already pretty packed, but when you study organic chemistry, you'll see cis trans isomers. And the simplest example of those is going to be C2H4, and that's going to be uh, ethene. And ethene, uh, oh, C2H2, let's do Cl2. Yeah, C double bond C. So this one that I've just drawn is going to be the cis version of this molecule. And the trans version of this molecule, I apologize for squeezing this in. is going to have the CLs opposite each other, whereas the uh, cis is going to have the CLs next to each other and the H's next to each other as well. Um, so that's cis and trans, and that's just a good thing to know uh, as you uh, potentially embark on organic chemistry. That's cis and trans. Cis means close to or cup. Trans means opposites. One more version, that's uh, L and D optical isomers. I'll explain what L and D means in a minute. But for now, um, these are going to be non-superimposable mirror images. And uh, so non-superimposable uh, mirror images. And uh, the key word here is going to be chiral, right there. And to do these, we're going to have uh, this species here, which has three different types of ligands. And I'm going to check my notes to make sure I get this right. So we've got Fe in the middle here. One, two, same six positions. because they're both octahedral. Okay, and then what helps me actually is we're going to do a, a mirror in the middle of them. And let's see, so we put a CL up top. We put a NH3 here and NH3 here. CL OH2. So H2, and then we're just going to draw the mirror image of that. So my ammonia stay the same. My CL is close. My OH2 is there. And these are hard to imagine, but these are non-superimposable mirror images of each other in the same way that your two hands are. And non-superimposable mirror images are a big thing also in organic chemistry, also in transition metal complexes. And uh, so they're non-superimposable mirror images. So what are optical isomers? Uh, again, they're chiral. They're non-superimposable mirror images. Um, and uh, 
or why do we care? So why do we care? Well, um, first off, we care because amino acids are optical isomers or have optical isomers. Amino acids are chiral, and amino acids, uh, I'll explain in a second, have L and D optical isomers. And um, it turns out that they react differently. And so, for example, the best example I can think of and the most commonly known one is uh, Tylenol. And Tylenol has L and D isomers, chiral isomers, optical isomers. And uh, I believe it's the L one, but I'll, uh, I'll ask you to check it. Um, only one of them relieves pain, while the other one does not. Now, it turns out that optical isomers have uh, almost all of their properties identical or very close to each other, except the fact of how they interact with light. So when you buy Tylenol, you actually buy the L and D optical isomers mixed together. Again, I think it's the L, but uh, let's just assume it's the L. So the L optical isomer, uh, can't remember, well, uh, the L optical isomer, let's assume that's an L in fact, uh, is going to be the one that relieves pain, while the D optical isomer does nothing, meaning it has no bad side effects, it has no good pain relieving properties, because they're so hard to separate, they sell them together in one pill, which is not always the case, that one is uh, inactive biologically. So anyway, so that's uh, one reason to care about it. Uh, why do we care? Yes. Now, let's talk about what L and D mean. So we've got D right here and L. L stands for levorotatory, and it rotates plane polarized light to the left. Dextrorotatory uh, rotates plane polarized light to the right. I studied plane polarized light or polarized light in general in my graduate work, so please write a little smiley face next to the light bulb because uh, I'm excited, and maybe you are too about this. Um, but definitely I'm excited. So, uh, but then uh, what is polarized light? Well, uh, this is an old timey, timey light bulb down here. And it gives off all, well, first off, light travels as a wave. When you have a light bulb, it gives off light traveling as a wave in all directions. So it could be traveling as a wave in this plane this plane, this plane, and in fact, it gives off light with all polarization, all wave direction. Then number three is what's called a polarizer. And it says it blocks all but one of them. So now you have light going just like this in one wave. And that's what's symbolized by four. And then you pass it through your sample. Um, and that sample is going to rotate the plane, and it looks like it's rotating this to the left, so this is going to be an L optical isomer, and then you can see how much it rotates it, and then you can tell if you have an optically active molecule. These only This only happens for a chiral molecule, and... Um, and this allows you to determine which chiral molecule you have, or if you have a mixture, which L or D you have more of. Because if you have a perfect mixture, and a perfect mixture is called a racemic mixture. So racemic has equal parts L and D. Um, and anyway, so this is how you analyze optically active uh, compounds to see which ones you've made. 